Hello and welcome to AEF TV uh, in association with Angerati. I'm now joined by Valid Seta, uh, who's the uh, Africa and Caribbean Zone Business Development Vice President uh, from Schneider Electric. Uh, Valid, firstly, welcome. Thanks for making the time here. Thank you. Uh, I, and we were talking a little bit off air about um, what uh, a theme that I explored in some of the other uh, mm -hmm. interviews about uh, what I call this uh, collision between yeah. our economic paradigm, which mm. is by and large about growth. I mean, the word sustainability is starting to creep in, but at the moment yeah. still about growth. Conversations around Africa also use that uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, adjective uh, uh, very often. Mm -hmm. Growth in Africa, growth, growth, growth. Um, but every time you say growth, somewhere down the line, mm. There, there, there is an equation that needs to be balanced, which is the energy and power equation. Because you know you, you can quite easily draw a line between or, and correlation between growth and energy consumption from the industrial revolution onwards. Yeah. Um, so, what is what do you see the role is for companies like Schneider Electric in terms of at least trying to balance? those conflicting things yes. out a little well, bit? Well, in fact, it's, it's in the heart of our strategy mm. uh, is that we, we started from this, this statement, mm. which is the energy dilemma. Mm. We will need a, a double uh, of the produced energy, at least for the African continent, by 2030. And on the other hand, we really need to look after our resources and to optimize them uh, uh, if we don't want to have a bigger problem in the future. So Schneider Electric is part of the solution, and we do believe that uh, um, we could uh, uh, optimize this energy production to be consumed in a smarter way. This is what we call the energy efficiency with mainly two aspects. Uh, we call them the smart grid. What is a smart grid? It is a, a grid that is not just only pumping up electricity, but also managing the demand and the response to that demand, the peak hours, which is somehow clever in managing the load of a city or of a country, or why not a continent like Africa. So this is one part of it. The other part is the optimization of consumption of each and every industry, each and every building, and there are now technological solutions for that. And companies like ours are here to provide these solutions which are enabling any company, any hotel, any building, any hospital to provide the same services, consuming less energy. And this is possible with the technology of today. This is one part of the solution. The other part of the solution is to generate electricity differently. You spoke about the limited resources of our continent and of the world. So why not to use the unlimited uh, resources of the sun, for example, or the wind? And our company is also taking this axis as quite important, which is the renewable energy source. And here we are in Africa. I mean, we are in a continent where sun is there all, all the year round. We could get the benefit of this renewable energy. And we, we have to solve the technological issue of connecting these renewable energies to the grid. And again, we have the solution for that. So, so in terms of that, so uh, a couple of points there. One is about the smart grid, which, uh, again, there have been a lot of discussions. And one of the debates that I've had is that actually, OK, I can understand the smart grid, and you're within your rights to correct me here. I can just mm. understand the smart grid in a uh, sort of very developed, with uh, you know, uh, sort of large distribution networks yeah. and things like that. Mm. But I, I personally can't understand the smart grid in uh, some of the environments we're talking about in Africa, where you maybe have a, 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 almost a city-state where I could say, okay, mm. that validates a smart grid. But as soon as you move outside of that, you're in very rural uh, communities with uh, rural agrarian infrastructure who, where, to me, it seems a smart grid doesn't make sense. 
So because uh, there is no grid at all. There's no grid at all. So uh, we do in this case we do privilege uh, uh, for sure what we call microgrid, and microgrid can be based first on renewable. It can be autonomous if it's in a remote area, and we are making the difference between high density areas, and we have to say that the population of Africa is more and more, uh, uh, I would say, living in cities. Um, uh, Africa is more urbanized than India today. So more and more people are living in cities. Having said that, if, uh, if we have to treat the rural areas, of course, I agree, it will not be through immediate smart grid solutions. It will be through microgrids. Why not based on an autonomous, clean energy source, like again, uh, solar energy. We have experienced that in not less than 15 uh, villages in Nigeria, for example. We are proud of that. We have experimented that in uh, Madagascar. We have experimented it also in South Africa. And this solution is, is working quite well. In fact, it's quite robust. It has to be maintenance free because it, by definition, it's in a remote area. Once you have sold all, the, all these technological solution, you have found the, the I would say, the, the so, dilemma solution. So, so have you uh, sort of, you know, because one of the criticisms of that, and it, uh, and it may be uh, a criticism of people who aren't as deeply involved in the industry as you are, but one of the criticisms of having those microgrid yeah. types of uh, solutions is that uh, sometimes they are just donated or, or, or uh, you know, uh, someone's whipped up enough cash to give someone a solar panel, mm -hmm. but you know that then breaks six months later, and, then, and nobody know, cares. Nobody cares. Uh, yeah. and I, I, I really uh, appreciate, I would say, the, this question because we understood that more than three or four years ago, and we created a, a foundation and an initiative, which is called Bip Bop business with bottom of the pyramid mm. and this initiative is all about that is about making people interested in the clean energy they get mm. and to initiate a type of business by which a, a, a person or a group of person in a village will make out of this micro generation station their own business right and what we say is that we don't go for that type of of solution if we don't find a, a local authority, even a traditional one, sometimes in some in villages the traditional authority of the village will be not necessarily the official one, mm -hmm. why not? Mm -hmm. And we will make sure that this person with a group of person will get the right training mm -hmm. and will get the right reward from the, the population itself to make the whole uh, machine uh, uh, turn and it's working honestly right. it's working uh, it's difficult it's much more difficult than just offering the the microgrid solution and sure. let it go uh, but it, when it's working we're, we're really excited about it and, uh, and we're happy about that because because I've read examples about people uh, you know taking that sort of solution that, that sort of approach and uh, uh, they they become the place you go to in the village to charge your mobile phone and they exactly. get a few, few, few little pieces yeah, of Yeah, yeah, of course, do you charge your mobile phone? Yeah. Uh, 600 million mobile phones in Africa. Yeah. So we made the technological uh, jump in that field. Mm. And yes, we do have uh, this, this idea of charging mobile phones, charging batteries that will serve for other remote area villages to watch TV, for example. So they come to the village to charge the batteries and they pay something to the people uh, who are who are managing the microgrid uh, power power station, and you get a little local new economy exactly. bubbling up uh, as a exactly. result of that. This is yeah. the, the purpose of it. So, yeah. well, uh, I, uh, th that sounds in, uh, really fascinating. And then you're going back to the other point you made very early on, um, you're talking about okay, well, this is all well and good, uh, but the other thing we need to look at is how that. Uh, energy is being consumed mm. and make sure that it's in, uh, consumed in the most efficient way as well. So yeah. if, if I can again challenge you on that point, mm. and the reason for the challenge is this, is uh, okay, if you've got a, we're here in Barcelona, you've, you've got a big uh, uh, hotel, mm. you, you put in the right 
infrastructure to do all the uh, you know HVAC monitoring yep. and all that yes. sort of stuff. Fine, I uh, understand that. But imagine for a second you're not in Barcelona and you're somewhere who say, well, actually, I really need a building here, you know, and the decision comes between, okay, I'm going to build this traditionally, mm -hmm. or do I put the technology and monitoring in, but that's going to cost me another 50,000, yeah. and I'm not going to do that. How do we solve that? You know, this is one of the most difficult, I would say, uh, questions uh, for, for managing the electrical energy in Africa. Uh, here comes the tariff issue. Yeah. If, uh, if you simply raise the tariff at the peak time as a, as a utility, uh, just to cover your costs, which is very often not the case in Africa, then when, when the promoter or when the owner will start building his hotel, he will make his calculations and he will see that the ROI, the return on investment will be just like two years or three years mm -hmm. if he invests in a clean or green or sustainable building. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, if the electricity is subsidized to a level where cost of electricity is nothing for the investor, of course, the solution will, will come much later to the African continent. So I have to admit that here, the ball is on the government side, on the utilities side, just to, uh, um, I would say, give compensation to the, to the users mm. who are making the effort. Mm. And, 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 and reward the people who will make that of course. Uh, 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 that, that of bigger course. effort. Uh, but that, uh, and, and that seems to me the, uh, the, uh, the very big challenge. And uh, um, uh, I know we're coming to the end of our time here. We've got about uh, 10 to 15 mm -hmm. minutes here, and you've got yeah. uh, other things to do. Uh, but uh, one of the other questions I, I, I was going to ask you is like, with a, uh, and a lot of our um, uh, interviewees have said that as well, and uh, people have talked about this idea of uh, leapfrogging in energy much like Africa did with telecoms yeah. a little bit. Uh, what's your take on that? I mean, to me, some of it isn't actually about leapfrogging. It's more about uh, Africa has got some unique and very individual challenges, and mm -hmm. all that people are doing is finding the right solutions for that problem. I'm, I'm not necessarily seeing much leapfrogging in terms of technology. Yeah, uh, of course, in, in infrastructure business, uh, uh, the, the, the technological jumps are not as impressive as in telecommunication. This is for sure. Having said that, we are in an era where data uh, for electrical distribution, for energy globally, data was just for the purpose of monitoring, for looking good, mm -hmm. for dra drawing nice curves. Mm -hmm. Today, it's not the case anymore. And this is a technological move. Uh, the second technological move is also the possibility of connecting, uh, I would say, power line carriers on, on very long distances. And let us dream a little bit and say that, for example, if we could connect Kenya to Nigeria, mm -hmm. the peak time of Nigeria is not the one of Nigeria. Mm. I mean, it's not the same time. So we could manage the load and the production mm. throughout the, 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 the day. This could be a good dream, and this could be a huge technological jump for African continent. Mm. All this is feasible. Mm. It's, it's uh, I would say, less, uh, it's less showy, mm. but uh, it is very efficient, and it's coming. Mm. And I, 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 we would predict that it's coming within the three to five coming years. Right, okay, that soon. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, on that note, we're we'll leave it as, as I said I, I, yeah. I could ask you many more questions <laughs> but but we're under pressure of time so uh, Valid thank you for joining us thank it's you very much genuinely interesting and thank you as well for watching uh, this interview and uh, many others on uh, uh, EnergyNet AEF and uh, Engerati thanks again